think every calorie is the same, think again. This is one of the most common mistakes people make when chasing their best physique. Not every deficit will get you ripped the same way. Not every surplus will make a lean bulk successful. Overlooking this truth, or worse, ignoring it, is what holds so many people back from reaching their true potential. The quality of the food you eat doesn't just matter, it can make or break your progress, especially long term. In 2024, we've got smartphones, AIs, supplements for almost everything, yet there is still no cheat code for this. Higher quality food equals better results, and trust me, it's not even close. And in this video, I'm going to show and explain to you exactly why that's true, and my goal by the end of it is that you level up your trash diet once and for all so you can look, feel, and perform your best. So let's get started. Calories dictate how much you weigh. Simple enough, they determine whether the scale moves up or down, whether you're gaining or losing weight. But macronutrients decide whether that weight is muscle or fat mostly, so are you building lean muscle or are you simply getting fat as fuck? Or worse, are you losing muscle when you're trying to shed fat? But micronutrients and fiber, these are the silent heroes behind the scenes, the difference makers. Often overlooked but absolutely crucial, they determine how you feel and how you function throughout the entire process. Your energy, mood, and performance all depend on these nutrients working behind the scenes. Now, I get it. In the short term, it's tempting to just hit your calorie and macro targets with whatever's easy. Processed foods, quick fix meals, or supplements, right? No cooking, no hassle, just rip open a package and you're good to go. And let's be honest, it's hard to resist shelf-stable snacks that taste like the treats we loved as kids. I mean, give me some protein dunkaroos right now and I'll dummy them. It's convenient, and at first glance, it feels like you found the cheat code, right? You're losing or gaining weight, sticking to your calorie goals, hitting your protein numbers, it seems like a win. So why should it even matter if your meal came from a you know, microwave or fresh meal prep, or if your protein bar tastes like dessert? The real issue is what you're trading for that convenience. Processed low quality foods might help you hit your calorie counts, but it's quietly sabotaging your long-term results, your health, and most importantly, how you feel day to day. So it's the shortcut that eventually catches up to you. The price you pay comes in the form of low energy levels, poor performance in the gym over time, and even the ability to simply stay consistent with your goals. That quick fix isn't as harmless as it seems. So let's dig deeper into what the real cost looks like and why choosing convenience over quality could be sending you back more than you realize. Let's go through one by one some of the most important benefits of making this swap. The first benefit we need to dive into is satiety, a word that simply means how full and how satisfied you are after a meal. But don't underestimate its importance, especially when you're chasing big physicals. All right, now let me be honest, as someone who's been through 4,000 calorie a day bulks, even at one point, 5,500 calories during the peak of my dirtiest bulk, which of course I don't recommend. I used to think, who cares about satiety? I can handle the hunger, right? Willpower, bro, discipline. But that's the trap of short-term thinking. You might be able to power through hunger for a while, but if you're really in this for the long haul, years, even decades, satiety isn't just important, it becomes essential for your success. You'll learn this the hard way if you don't heed my advice now. Picture this, you're on a cut, eating the same amount of calories and macros in two different scenarios, and they're low. In one, you feel very full, satisfied, not constantly thinking about food, so you're feeling good. In the other scenario, you're battling over hunger every day, performance is dropping massively as a result, you're not sleeping all that great, etc. Which one sounds more sustainable? Which one keeps you locked in and focused on the journey ahead? And if you're serious about getting truly lean, let's say 8 to 12% body fat for men or 18 to 22% for women, it's not just about hitting these calorie targets, right? Because without the proper satiety, diet fatigue is going to set in faster and it's a killer. And again, you may not believe me, which means you'll have to find out the hard way yourself like so many other individuals constantly do. The constant hunger is going to wear you down. It's going to make the whole process feel like an uphill battle. But here's the thing. Satiety isn't just critical during the cut. It's also important when you're lean bulking. Overeating is one of the easiest mistakes to make when bulking, if you want to keep it within that steady, consistent range, and it can happen without you even realizing it. This is partially also why I recommend slightly higher protein intakes, among other reasons. By including more nutrient-dense, filling foods in your diet, you're going to reduce the chances of accidentally or intentionally overshooting your calorie goals, which can set you back months across the span of an entire bulk. Plus, choosing foods that take longer to digest and assimilate not only keeps you more full, it's going to also help regulate your energy levels. I can't emphasize this enough. It makes the entire process smoother and more manageable. This is the first big time benefit. Long term, paying attention to satiety also transforms your eating behaviors for the better. It's going to help you develop a relationship with food that's more about the, just the numbers, okay, which is important. And it's more about eating to fuel your body in a sustainable, enjoyable way. And that, my friends, is what will keep you in the game for years to come, which is key because 95% of people simply don't last long enough in this game to realize their goals to begin with. 
and it's because they're opting for the lazy methods like their lazy trash diets with lazy foods. The second massive benefit is nutrient assimilation and digestive health. The reason most lifters try to look like Greek gods or goddesses dismiss things like digestive health, nutrition assimilation, is because it doesn't sound like it contributes to their looks and is not really worth the extra effort of eating clean. But I assure you that's the opposite of the truth. You see, eating higher quality foods that include plenty of vitamins, minerals, fiber, have downstream effects on your results that compound over time. You will digest food better when it is healthier, typically, assuming you aren't allergic. Uh, the breakdown of these foods causes fewer and lower spikes of certain hormones in the blood that can play on energy levels throughout the day. They can also play on sleep quality as well. So eating better foods most of the time, you're likely going to improve your sleep quality, your recovery, your hormone balance, and all of the benefits that come from these things, such as better performance, cognitive function, mood, and the ability to tolerate stress. All pretty vital in building your best physique, if you ask me. Speaking of which, hitting or missing fiber intakes alone can significantly alter your chances of getting sick or even developing chronic issues or diseases definitely two things not conducive to gains. Getting sick for even a short period of time can halt progress instantly, of course, but struggling to get over small sicknesses or long-lasting illnesses that could set you back pretty badly. I remember in 2015 when I was eating like a monster, though many shit foods, mind you, along with other poor habits, I got up to 250 pounds and then I came down with strep throat and the flu at the same time. In two weeks, I had lost 25 pounds and basically wiped out half of my entire bulk's progress in those two weeks of being bedridden and not being able to eat basically anything. Now, if you get sick, this isn't meant to make you feel shame or guilt for it. Focus on recovering and you probably won't set yourself back all that much. But ultimately, getting sick often is something that you can lower your chances on significantly by eating healthier foods in combination with healthier habits that can improve from that. In fact, since stopping drinking alcohol, sleeping better, eating cleaner, I've been sick a total of two times over the last eight years, and each time was a fever that lasted a few hours, and I was good. Serious, better eating habits can cascade into serious beneficial life-altering trends. The fourth benefit I've touched on slightly, but it's improved hormone regulation. When eating higher quality food, the digestion process is usually much slower, and this is actually a good thing. And it often means that the nutrients you've ingested are going to release more slowly over the course of several hours, rather than processed foods, that are filled with you know, processed sugars, for instance, that can cause more erratic spikes in hormones like insulin, which is likely less than ideal for steady, stable, and reliable energy levels both during the day and in general for your training. To be clear, processed foods are not some sort of evil conspiracy made to kill us all and make us sick. They are literally just foods designed for convenience and ease of consumption, which comes with the trade-off of all the things I've mentioned in this video. Of course, they still have their time and place, but it should probably not be most of the time every day. If your breakfast is made up of a carb-heavy cereal with mostly processed ingredients, like let's say like a Fruit Loops or some shit, that is not benefiting your energy levels as much as something with higher quality carbs, such as fruits, that would have otherwise improved your training and your energy for the entire day ahead. Also, of course, insulin is the most anabolic hormone in the body, and I'm not discussing it in the sense of insulin is bad and causes you to stop burning fat as many other ignorant influencers online seem to claim or believe but more regulated insulin levels are of course preferred over erratic ones if the goal is superior results in muscle growth and stabilized energy levels long term the fifth benefit to eating high quality foods is better mood and energy day to day the importance of this cannot be understated when you don't understand the physique game enough or perhaps life enough you seem to think that things operate in a vacuum you think oh i don't care about energy day to day I just want to get my results as easily and as quickly as possible and i just need energy for my workout really and caffeine will do that for me but your mindset across long spans of time often dictate things like your willpower and your discipline moment to moment your drive your ambition your ability to take on and tolerate stress and even just your ability to focus and stay motivated to keep pushing as the years go by as expectations are sometimes not met this is a multi-year long process to reach your physique let's not forget eventually we realize that everything in your life is connected. If your mood is low, your cognitive performance and willpower declines. This may not seem like a big deal today or tomorrow, but over the course of months, this could be very detrimental. Eating the higher quality foods is going to ensure you look much better in the form of, let's say, even just better skin, hair, and other cosmetic things. It's gonna boost your mood, boost confidence. It's gonna directly translate over time to somebody who's more motivated, someone with a higher capacity to be committed to something and focused long-term, someone who can push harder and for longer, and someone who always stays more positive in the face of distractions or road bumps that are inevitably coming up ahead. If your life outside of the gym and building a better physique feels better, 
you enjoy it more. You cultivate more excitement from it. And then you're 10 times more likely to stick to it and continue to improve this area of your life as well as others. Eating shitty foods just to hit some targets because you only care about building your best physique and don't care about the rest is a paradox. They are inextricably linked and one feeds into another. So if you want to build your best physique, seek to build your best lifestyle for optimum health. On top of all of these benefits, higher quality sources of protein, carbs, and fats are cheaper when bought in bulk than their supplemental or processed counterparts. Oftentimes, fruits and veggies are quite cheap too, and the extra trips to the grocery store is going to help keep your activity levels higher, and that's going to get you out of the damn house more, so it's a win-win there. There's also a good chance that your palate has desensitized to the way normal food should taste, and this increases cravings, which makes dieting down harder down the line, and boosting food quality is the antidote to this. Boosting food quality is always the antidote. All of that being said, protein supplements, carb supplements are usually high quality forms of those macronutrients, and they're fine to take for the purpose of convenience. But relying on them daily, especially multiple times per day, is doing yourself a disservice if the goal is a maximum physique progress and better health overall. And thinking a greens powder is going to solve your need to ever eat a vegetable is a sad proposition at best. One of my current clients came to me struggling to break through his current level of leanness to get truly lean once and for all. When I cracked open his nutrition diaries, I saw him drinking four protein shakes a day amongst other insanities. Safe to say, after a few weeks of proper nutrition composition optimization, he's dropped to a low he's never reached before while feeling performing better than he ever has. He stopped his lazy diet and started eating like a grown adult. The results flooded in. So how can you optimize your nutrition composition over the next few weeks and really start to feel and see the difference it makes in your progress? It's actually pretty simple. Firstly, if you are tracking your nutrition daily, start with that and do so for the next seven days. Hopefully, if you've subscribed to me, you've been tracking your shit already. Anyways, you can now comb through your typical meals and look at where you've got lots of like filler, lazy foods plugged in. Now, for the next two weeks, you're going to swap just one of those daily meals, starting with breakfast, for example. So use your food tracker, take five to 10 minutes and play around with a combination of higher quality food sources to match the exact same calories and macros of the current meal. For example, I recently did this with my breakfast. I was simply eating a bowl of mini wheat cereal with 2% milk and a protein bar. Weak. I spent the five minutes and came up with a new breakfast that has been 10 times more filling, delicious, and has boosted energy levels to tidy and performance in the gym by a ton. Greek yogurt, organic cereal ingredients, frozen raspberries, strawberries, bananas, and cinnamon. You can already tell the difference in volume just from that alone. I matched up the calories and macros and boom, diet has been leveled up as has my life. Now it's your turn. Just optimize one meal at a time for each of the next two weeks. And if you don't take my word for everything I've said in this video, go ahead and try it for yourself. What's the worst that can happen? you're gonna feel the exact same way you did before. The best that can happen, you're gonna take your energy, performance, recovery, sleep, satiety, mood, cognitive function, confidence, health, relationship with food, assimilation of nutrients, immune system, and life to the next level. And if you don't, you can come back and comment on this video and call me a shill for farmers and healthy foods, I guess. I don't know, whatever carnivore diet people would blame, which to be honest, I'd be more than happy to be on the other side of whatever the fuck carnivore dieters are on, but nonetheless, lock in and get it done. Keep in mind, this is a consistent process. I'm still optimizing my diet till this day, and it will probably never end, as long as your goal is to never stop getting better. And on that note, if you wanna instantly take your training, tracking, and nutrition even further as soon as possible, I've got everything you need to do so in the description below. Thanks as always for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you stopped eating like a two-year-old like I used to, and I'll see you in that next one. I'm out.